scam track sucks. Scam track. You paid what, six hundred dollars to go to California from here? I'm from California. Didn't pay, not a dime, not a dime. We will explain to you why some young Americans are willing to throw away the only life they have ever known for adventure and a life on the railroad. There, there's something, I guess, the lore of adventurism, the uncertainty, you hop a train, you don't know where that car is going. If you ask yourself what could drive someone to such lengths, it becomes clear that the stories you encounter are not that far from home. Uh, I ain't gonna speak for everybody, but most of us have like family situations that led us into this Lifestyle. Most of us. Yeah. 90% of us. Yeah, a lot so. of us. Uh, what, what kind of like, just like things at home, like just kind of stuff with parents, you know, broken homes, stuff like that? From abuse to just differences, honestly. Like some people were abused and some people just had such huge differences that they felt like the only way out was either death or at all. Cause I like my freedom. My young age, I just had, I don't know, I got wild hair. I like to move a lot. So I just started traveling at a young age and I just got to enjoy it. It you know was. about riding on a freight train? Not the boredom, unless you're with like cool kids. But <coughs> the view. So yeah, the view, yeah. the train, the scenery. gliding over the land, and just the scenery. Like, the states, sunset and the sunrise. Yeah, the interstates, like you see so much scenery from that, but riding on trains, it takes you in no man's land where like nobody is supposed to be and you see so much more beautiful wildlife and like so much more scenic mountains and fields and everything else. It's just, that's one of the main things that keeps driving me to ride trains. Yeah, I mean, to me it's like fighting the system. I mean, I also do it to eat because I can't get a job being as a felon with no ID, it's hard. Every once in a while you might catch somebody and want to pay you on the table, do a little job here and there for $40, $50. But otherwise, I fly a sign 24-7. But beyond the broader ideals of peaceful protest, one of our travelers, as they like to be called, opened up into his own decision to leave home for a life on the rails. I got kicked out of my uh, parents' house, and I went to Texas with this chick I was supposed to be getting engaged to that I was supposed to have my child. Long story short, she ended up like intentionally miscarrying my child and taking everything from me and left me homeless on the streets. So I went around like trying to get back on my feet and nobody wanted to hire me because I was homeless and I was dirty. So, so uh, I ran in, I was hitchhiking all the way back. I made it from Pecos, Texas, all the way to Little Rock, Arkansas, and which is an hour south of where I, where I live. And then these two wanted to go back to Texarkana. So I helped them get down to Texarkana and then I ran into some tra uh, train riders, like traveling kids, and they said that they were hopping a train and I never hopped a train before. So I was like, can I, hey, can I tag along? And they're like, yeah. So I went from Texarkana, Texas, Arkansas border to uh, Shreveport, Louisiana on my first train. <laughs> Despite all the ups and downs of this lifestyle, it is still an illegal activity with serious consequences. A lot has changed since the peak of train hopping during the Great Depression. Oh, it's clearly illegal because you're trespassing. Oh, there's no question it's illegal because you're trespassing. And as I say, the railroads have a much more incentive to enforce this today than they would have said, say, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, for two reasons. The, the concern of terrorism, and we've become much more litigious. In the, sense, in the sense of uh, 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 litigation. So the railroads are very, very defensive with respect to litigation, as they should be. It becomes clear that these travelers are very aware of the illegality of their actions and what ramifications they may carry. Um, they, they hire new bulls or rail cops. Like, that's our uh, lingo for them, or the yeah. bulls. Um, they hire new bulls, and most of them are feds like federal police, so that way, even if they see you in the train yard, they can pursue you outside the train yard and still arrest you. Because most like city bulls, if they catch you on a train, they'll ticket you or take you to jail, or they'll release you and like, don't do it again. Um, the federal bulls, if they see you on a train, they're, they have like abundant jurisdiction. Like you can be three counties away 
Like, and they could go after you. Yeah, and they could find you and be like, you were on my train and arrest you. You're going to jail. Yeah. And you do 85% of federal time, yeah. usually. So, even if you're only going for three days, like, which is, I doubt, it's most like, more longer than that. Most of the times they you, they are, are you release you on release you on your own recognizance because they know that you're going to be leaving town anyways. So it just becomes a warrant, like a little petty warrant, and they know that you're not going to pay it, or they know we're not going to pay it because like if we're out flying a sign and stuff, trying to make money to eat, and like cops, some cops are write you a ticket and you're like, I'm out here flying a sign trying to get me food. And you give me a $177 ticket? How do you expect me to pay this? I mean, I've gone like three, four days without eating while I'm traveling. Did you ever have to dump stuff? Nah, I ain't. I'll fly a sign or I'll ask somebody to go get me some food before I dump stuff. The worst, like the lowest part of traveling is like dumpster diving. Like digging through the trash for yeah, food, it's not even that bad. but it really ain't that bad because some gas stations or McDonald's and stuff like they throw away hot food that is messed up because the customers didn't want it. So you go and dig it out, and you're like, "Hey, this is still hot. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this." What about um, you know some of the, the train operators that travel with dogs and stuff? Do you know anything about that? Or like I mean, most of them like dogs, but like if you're under a bridge or something for a night, it's good protection because they'll you know they'll bark. Let you know somebody rolling up on you, whatever. So, that's why you see a lot of train hoppers that are like going by themselves. They always carry a dog with them. When I see people that are like, my dog eats better than me, and their dog's like skin and bones, that puts bad on me. Like, because like you see one skinny up dog, you think they're all up, and they're not. Like, dogs are taken care of. That's your that's your brother. Yeah. Those people are like, like, oh, your child. dog deserves a better life. It's like your dog, you go to work and you leave your dog in your backyard. My dog is here always. I don't give a like how happy you love your dog. My dog lives a better life. We talked about this being really from the 1930s and actually starting before that. But realistically, always when I grew up on the railroad tracks uh, uh, north of Richmond on the RF&P, you would always see uh, people just their feet hanging out, just looking out the side on uh, open box cars and in gondolas. So this has always been with us. I mean, like I say, it's just like a freedom. You're free to go wherever you want, whenever you want to.